Hello, everyone. This is Adam Tabera with PsychedelicInvest.com. I hope you guys are all having a phenomenal, phenomenal end to your week. Uh, in today's episode of Weekly Extractions, we are going to be taking another look at a company I've been com- covering very frequently lately. Uh, we're going to be just getting digging right back into the whole MindMed saga that's been unfolding right before our eyes. Um, it's going to be a great episode, so stay tuned and let's jump right into things. All right, guys, now to jump right into the MindMed saga. So uh, this is thanks to Control Plus Z. This is a snippet of a document that was filed. Um, and basically, I know the reasoning for it. I, I, thank you so much, Control Plus Z. You're a gem. I appreciate you, buddy. Um, so the reasoning, uh, I know why this was posted. I know why he highlighted this. And uh, it makes sense to me. So basically, MindMed has been trying to distance themselves from this court case since uh, the documents went public. Now... What this says here is that this case also involves MindMed Inc., a company publicly traded on the NASDAQ exchange under the symbol MindMed. So MindMed is essentially an an interested party in this case. Now, what does that mean? It means that MindMed is specifically going to be interested in the outcome of this case because they're going to be mentioned very, very frequently. Now, this could be good stuff. This could be bad stuff. If I had to bet money on this, it would be not so great stuff based on the previous documents that came out. Um, so I just wanted to, to start off with this because at the end of the day, MindMed has been very much, uh, maintained that they're not involved in this and whatnot. And that they're right. They're not getting sued, but their reputation is, uh, in my opinion, very, very much, uh, intertwined with this lawsuit. And we're going to be seeing a lot more information regarding MindMed, uh, come to come out to the public, and it might be some pretty not so great stuff. Um, I'm just speculating here, just based on the tone and and based on the the past and based on the unredacted documents that we saw uh, prior to this. So I am just eagerly anticipating more of these um, more of these documents. Um, the court documents, and we'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, uh, it's very obvious that. Um, MindMed is not really doing everything they can be to supporting retail investors right now. Um, and we're going to elaborate on that in the next in the next thing I get into. So let's just jump into that right now. So what we have here is uh, this was a statement made by Freeman Capital Management. So I'm going to be I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to be taking uh, bits that I thought were very interesting. So. In regard to the negotiations with Freeman Capital, management has consistently slow rolled the negotiations, misled FCM regarding timelines, and engaged in bad faith antics while the stock price has been plummeting. And we also have um, uh, essentially Freeman Capital management hopes to reach an agreement in principle on these issues at the meeting, uh, barring the foregoing. Freeman Freeman Capital Management will have no choice but to execute a myriad of planned responses to effectuate the value enhancement plan. So Freeman Capital Management put forth a value enhancement plan. Uh, You can find that on their website, uh, mindmed.zone forward slash letter. And they go on to say Freeman Capital Management will not tolerate or accept the status quo of excess management compensation, out of control costs and inefficient drug development. So I want to highlight this because this really resonated with me. So I'm going to be focused on Robert Barrow a lot here. Um, And not that I have anything against him personally. It's just he is the CEO for the company right now. And he's made some pretty, um, in my opinion, uh, just idiotic statements. So the first one was where Robert Barrow said they were keeping their IP close to the chest because they didn't want to tip off um, competitors. So when I first read that, I laughed to myself and I was just like, what is he thinking? Like, what is this? You have Every other company in the psychedelic sector aggressively pursuing patents. You have Compass. Every day you're reading about a new Compass patent. You have Atai aggressively pursuing patents. You have Numinous just granted a patent today for for a specific type of psilocybin. Um, Or or I think they filed a patent. I wasn't sure if they were granted it. Um, You have Perception Neuroscience, the company that was spun off from Field Trip uh, once again going after protecting their own intellectual property and patenting their formulations. And then you have MindMed and Robert Barrow over here saying, no, 
we're not going to go. We're not aggressively going to pursue patents. We're going to keep it close to the chest. We don't want to tip off our uh, competitors. That was that blew me away when I read that. That's so not the strategy that should be uh, taking place right now. We are early within the psychedelic biotech sector. You should be aggressively pursuing, pursuing patents unless you have something so, so groundbreaking. So groundbreaking, which I really, really do not think my med has anything that groundbreaking. Um, so, like, it just does, didn't make sense to me, and it really rubbed me the wrong way, and it just kind of started my whole uh, started my whole path of being very skeptical in regards to my med and Robert Barrow. I thought that was the beginning. That was the the cat the straw that broke the camel's back for me. So then we have compensation here as well. So once again, we'll bring up Robert Barrow. And I know it's a lot of the management as well. It's not just Robert Barrow, but specifically Robert Barrow is getting paid more than $3 million uh, in terms of his salary to run MindMed. That is frothy, guys. That is a lot of money to run a, a biotech company that isn't that isn't profitable or doesn't have much going for it in general in terms of patents, intellectual property, um, and stuff like that. I just... I just think that, um, and once again, it's nice to see that Freeman Capital and Management are in the same boat here. It's just uh, they're seeing the overinflated salaries or of upper management. And they're like, "What the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? Is this a company that's actually trying to do uh, some great work here, or is this just to make upper management profitable at the cost of investors?" Because right now, in regards to um, how things look optically, it just looks like. It's going to be a situation where the upper management, the people who already have the money, are just going to be profiting and keep profiting while uh, the retail investors suffer. So it's compensation, out of control costs, and inefficient drug development. In regards to inefficient drug development, it was also uh, Scott Freeman mentioned that they would be able to, they had the data to skip a phase two and go right into a phase three. So it was like, once again, that could save the company a lot of money. It's a lot, a lot of money here. Um, and yeah, and in regards to MyMed has a, a share offering on the table here. They can dilute at any point. I will say this, if MindMed's MindMed ends up diluting investors, that would be uh, that would be it in terms of just investor sentiment and MindMed. Um, they already did a reverse split uh, in the midst of a bear market. Uh, when this happened, I let the community know how against it I was and how I thought it was really, really the bad move. I would have rather MindMed um, took the delisting on the chin and then provided shareholder value and let let the stock price appreciate organically. If you have if you guys are doing all the right things as a company and you have value in IP or whatnot, then let the stock price appreciate organically and make it back onto the Nasdaq. It's not like institutional investment is the bulk of what's propping up my men right now because it really isn't. It's all retail investment. So I didn't understand the purpose behind the reverse split. I thought it was just going to end up blowing up in the faces of retail. And lo and behold, um, if we look at the stock price, I think MindMed's trading at like $5.80 something cents right now. We'll check it at the end of the video. But uh, it's it's just this is already not – it's already turning out um, – pretty terribly for retail investors. So they had the reverse split. And I think if you're comparing, um, I think MindMed is right now is hovering at all time lows. So this is really, really not great for retail investors. And it, But it's okay for the upper management in MindMed because they're still going home with their uh, ginormous paychecks. They're fine. They, they can sleep at night while retail are losing money. Um, it's just unfortunate the way things unfolded. So I'll read this last thing by Scott Freeman. I founded MyMed to bring psychedelic-inspired medicines to the market to help people. Our patients and shareholders deserve better than this. So I can't speak on Scott Freeman's intentions. I don't know him that well. We had one interview together, and he seemed like a pretty nice guy. Um, but in regards to what he's saying, our patients and shareholders deserve better than this. I can echo that sentiment. The MyMed investors deserve so much better than this. They have supported this company through thick and thin. They are... Through every like every everything that has unfolded over time, JR Rand leaving, the stock price basically uh the the stock price depreciating significantly since all time highs. They remained optimistic throughout. They were buying the dip, they were doing what they can to support the company. 
And it's the question here is, is MindMed doing everything they can to protect, to protect their investors? And uh, from my perspective, it doesn't look like it at all. Uh, MindMed has remained pretty much silent during all of this. They came out with one statement where uh, they said that, hey, we are not the ones that are being sued in this. We have no part in this lawsuit. Okay, fine. They're correct. They're not being sued. Um, and they released uh, two patent uh, filings, one for uh, using genomic sequencing to hone in on a dosage for LSD, and another one, I think it was for some type of MDMA derivative. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments. But in regards to, I already went, like analyzed the genomic sequencing uh, patent filing, and I'll give you guys um, a bit of my thoughts on that right now. I just think that MyMed is trying to piggyback on hype right now in terms of genomics and psychedelics and putting the two together. I don't think there's any substance to that patent because at the end of the day, uh, the tried and true tested method of sorting out dosages for LSD from microdoses to macrodoses is to start very low and increase that way. They do that. Psychiatrists do that with medications all the time. So if you go to a psychiatrist and they prescribe you some type of antidepressant or anti-anxiety medication, they usually start you on a pretty low dose and they'll increase it over time because that's how you kind of hone in on a dose. It's very cost effective. It's You don't have to use genomic sequencing to do this. Now, my med is saying, oh, we'll use genomic sequencing to hone in on these do dosages. But what nobody's thinking about, how much is genomic sequencing going to cost in order to hone in on these dosages? Because it's pretty damn expensive, guys. Especially when you have a tried and true method of just starting those dosages pretty low and increasing incrementally. Just increasing like that until you get to a dosage that is good for the patient. So it's like that's just that's my opinion and my perspective on the mind med uh, genomics LSD dosaging dosing um, patent. Um, I think it's a lot of fluff with no substance. Um, but hey, I'd love to see them filing for more patents patents because at the end of the day, keeping your patents close to the chest, Robert Barrow, is not the right move. It's not the right move. Especially while the stock price is deteriorating in front of investors' eyes. Gets, let some of that IP out. Um, and if you guys actually do have something of substance here, um, we'll be able to make sense of it. And once again, hopefully you get granted those patents. But there's no reason to, keep, to be keeping patents close to the chest at this stage in the game right now. Um, yeah, but that's my perspective on that. So essentially, uh, this was... Uh, Freeman Capital Management's statement in regards to the correspondence that they had with MindMed. Today it came out that MindMed, uh, basically the deal with MindMed was, there was no deal. So it looks like Freeman Capital Management will be taking up the role of an activist investor. And it's going to be interesting to see what kind of news is going to come out of this. What are we going to find out in regards to what's going on behind the scenes at MindMed? Or what was going on behind the scenes at MindMed? It's going to be very interesting to be able to peek behind that curtain to see just what happens behind some of these biotech companies. Because I can tell you guys firsthand here uh, that it's it's not in favor of investors most of the time. Um, like 99% of the time, it's always to make uh, – and like this makes sense. It's always to make the management and the, uh, the bigger investors um, more money. Uh, retail investors are literally the lowest of the low in terms of what – uh, a lot of these companies care about. They don't really care about retail as much. They care about their the big whale investors that they have, the five percenters, the ten percenters, whatever it is, uh, the institutions that are supporting them. Um, and retail investors usually get thrown to the wolves at the end of the day. Um, and like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what's going on behind the scenes here because I can promise you guys, I can't promise anything. But from my perspective, is I don't think they had, um, they had the they had retail investors in mind when making a lot of these decisions or decisions that we might find out about so the the last thing i want to get into here is going to be we're going to take a look at mind meds chart post reverse split so let's get into that right now all right guys so this is the chart um post reverse split so we have reverse split right around here uh and then since then we've had Nothing but uh, depreciation and deterioration in stock price. Now, this is what happens when you reverse split in a bear market, uh, especially when you're a biotech com or early stage biotech company that is producing no revenue and also doesn't have any IP or patents to show for it either. It's like, what do we have to value here? What is what is valuable here?
The partnership with Basil, yes, I think that is one of the main things MyMed has going for it. But other than that, I don't see much. Um, I want to hear more from MyMed. Um, I would love to have anyone from MyMed on the show come out and basically just lay out the pathway to, to profitability and how you're going to support retail investors. Because at the end of the day, MyMed, retail is what is supporting the stock price here. You do not have my, many institutional investors at all. It's mostly retail here. Um, they need to come out and they need to address retail. Um, and at the end of the day, the stock price closed at closed at five dollars and seventy four cents today. Um, once again, it's we're scraping all time lows here. Uh, it's not looking great for the stock price. We'll see what happens. We'll see if MindMed will able, will be able to bounce from here or if it's going to create some new all time lows. If we're looking at the charts here, and I know some uh, some people were definitely. Um, giving me some flack for looking at technicals. And uh, I mean, I'm sorry if you're not interested in technicals, but I'm not going to stop because they they're, they are relevant in some capacity. Um, but my meds looking incredibly oversold here. So make with that, make of that what you will. Uh, I personally wouldn't jump in at, at this range yet because I feel like there, sorry guys, there could be more bad news on the horizon in regards to more, bearish catalysts that come out of uh the lawsuit with steven hurst and scott freeman so i would just tread carefully here um and we'll see what happens um this is adam tabero with psychedelicinvest.com my reddit and instagram names are waxing eloquence w-a-x-i-n-g-e-l-o-q-u-e-n-c-e um, feel free to message me if you want to talk about stocks, if you want to talk about psychedelics, if you want to talk about psychedelic stocks. I'm always there to have a conversation with you guys. I love interacting with the community, and I appreciate all the support I've received. Have a great weekend, guys.